This is the Buffalo Utility S2, and it has two chains. It's not the first bike to have two chains, but this is arguably the most popular two-chained bike. It doesn't have any electronics or gear shifters, so how does it work? At the front, it's business as usual. You have a chain set with two chain rings, each a different size. It's these two sizes that enable the bike to have two different gears. The larger 45 tooth chainring is great for cruising, while the smaller 27 tooth chainring is great for climbing. Each chainring has a separate chain, and each chain sits on a sprocket that's attached to the rear wheel. One of the sprockets has 18 teeth and the other 19. These sizes were carefully chosen to ensure chain tension was within operational tolerance. The inbound low gear, the one you'd use for riding up steep hills, is always engaged. However, I'm sure you'll notice that as I pedal forwards, both chains are moving. That's because the outbound gear is ready and waiting to be engaged. It's when I backpedal by about half a turn that the higher outbound gear engages and overrides the lower inbound climbing gear. All of this happens thanks to the freewheel and what's happening on the inside. The motion of backpedaling, followed by forward pedaling, engages and disengages pulls within the freewheel. When disengaged, the pulls are held in a little trap which stops them from providing drive and overriding the low gear. When you conduct the same backpedaling motion, you release the pulls from their traps and they move into the area of the freewheel which allows them to override the low gear and provide the drive, meaning you switch between the two chain rings and thus engage a different gear. So let's take a look at it in action. I'm currently in the outbound cruising gear, however, with one kick of the legs, there you go, I've switched over to the climbing gear and you can see that increase in cadence. Back to the cruising gear, the cruising gear has a ratio of 2.4, while the climbing gear has a ratio of 1.5. You can see how quickly my legs spin up when I go to the climbing gear. So what's it like to ride? Well, for what is a very heavy steel bike, it's actually incredibly fun. It did take a bit of time to get used to the backpedaling motion. I think at first I was either doing it not enough or too much, but when you kind of slow it down and you do it in a smooth half a turn rotation that you then pedal forwards, you can feel whether or not you're in the high or low gear. To be honest, once you've got a feel for it and you've got the hang of it, it's actually super easy to do. This technology, the free wheel in particular, was developed by World Bicycle Relief in partnership with SRAM, and it's protected by a pattern. And that got me thinking, could this have a use case elsewhere? This is my Brompton. I use it for flying around town and generally doing a lot of the journeys that I don't need my car for. And it also has two gears. This model has a little derailleur which moves the chain between two sprockets and is operated by a shifter on the bars. I wonder, could the free wheel have a use case on this bike? Since Bromptons are folding bikes, you'd still need the chain tensioner, but it would allow you to ditch the shifter and the cable. Perhaps it would be too complicated. Maybe it could have a better use case on city bikes. Either way, I think what has created is very cool, and it's great to see what happens when you let engineers create stuff without having a marketing department getting in the way. So why did World Bicycle Relief create this technology in the first place? Well, to answer that, you need to understand what the Buffalo Utility S2 is actually used for. It's a bit of a do-it-all machine. It's primarily used by those living in Africa as a way to transport heavy loads and mobilise people to and from a place of work or school across terrain that can be very harsh. That's why a sensitive derailleur that inherently comes along with more maintenance requirements would not be suitable. The solution needs to be rugged, reliable and cheap. The fewer moving parts, the better. So SRAM helped World Bicycle Relief develop the technology, allowing them to fit it to the Buffalo Utility S2. Having the lower climbing gear has meant that bigger, heavier loads can be transported with more ease across more challenging terrain. The S2 can carry up to 100 kilos of cargo, so it was certainly needed. Putting the drivetrain to one side for a moment, the bike offers a very comfortable ride. It's rolling on some 1.95 puncture resistant tyres from Kenda, it's got a very comfy saddle, and the stopping power comes from a pair of dual pivot caliper brakes. And everything on this bike can be fixed with simple, widely available tools. 
The saddle and handlebar grips are abrasion resistant, meaning upside down bike repairs are possible when a work stand isn't an option. Nearly all the components are made of steel or are still reinforced. The frame and fork are made of carbon steel and it's only made in one size but it comes with a huge amount of adjustability so people of all different sizes can use it. People often refer to bits of cycling tech as being bomb-proof, and really, I've always felt that that term is overused. Whilst I'm not going to test the S2 against an actual bomb, I think this certainly sets the bar for what can be described as being rugged and reliable. World Bicycle Relief has been going for 20 years and it's closing in on 1 million donated bikes. I've left a link down below if you want to help further their cause. These bikes cost about $200 and each bike can help mobilise up to four people. The ripple effect of that is employment, education and really just much needed mobilisation. I am keen to hear from all of you though. Can you think of any other use cases for that magic free will? Let me know down below.